friends, Cloudbart here. Time for another one minute identity and access management lesson. Previously, you may have heard me talk about using the condition element of a policy statement to control allow and deny sentiments based on the types of tags that a resource might have attached to them. And specifically in those examples, we were talking about uh, EC2 instance tags. So if a instance has a particular tag attached to it, we might allow actions to be performed, or we might deny it based on, again, the tag being there, not being there, or having the right values associated with it. Now, the tricky thing that we get ourselves into is that if we're gonna depend on tags, to control permissions, <laughs> we better darn sure make sure that people can't change the tags or that they are at least consistent as we move through the environment. Because if people can change those tags, then they can change the permissions that are associated with some of that logic. Now, the final part here is remembering that a tag is comprised of two parts. You have the key name, and then you also have the value part of it. So when we look at IAM policies and conditions, I can qualify based on just the key being present or a certain key or on whether or not the value is a specific value or a combination of the two. And so this is where things get kind of tricky for us. Let's jump into a policy and kind of see some of this logic in action. And so over here in my text editor, you can see that I'm taking a look at a statement that allows a user to create tags for EC2 instances. This is a good start. We want them to be tagging things so that we can qualify it, but it has to match a specific set of rules. Furthermore, we only want to allow them to define the environment key with two specific values. They could put in pre-prod, where they could put in production for the environment key itself. Now therein lies one of the key problems for ourselves, <laughs> no pun intended. When we define environment like that as a single little piece of text, it's actually not case sensitive. So this means that capital E environment or any combination of the word environment would match this particular rule. And if we're gonna allow users to create tags, we wanna keep it consistent. I don't want a bunch of different variations of the key name environment. <laughs> I want them all to have the exact same name. And this means that I need to force the user to type the right properties. So if you take a little bit farther down, we go further with the condition by saying that it not only has to have those values, but it has to match exactly this particular environment key. So I want you to note specifically that we have the request tag that identifies the values that we're using. And then down here, they're using the tag keys identifier to specify the allowed key names themselves. Now, as you might imagine here, getting this right doesn't always mean that we need to put in the right values. Maybe it's just the key name that we wanna use. And so further on down, you can see us using a slightly different one where we are tagging a resource, but we are enforcing specifically two types of key names. They can either define exactly environment or exactly cost center. But in this example, I'm not qualifying based on the values that they're providing. And so in the end, friends, if we're gonna depend on using tags to qualify permission scenarios, we need to make sure that the key name and the values that they provide match whatever expectations the administrators define in their policies. Using the uh, request tag or the tag keys operators allow us to define what the allowable key names are and the allowable values are as well. Something that we'll be able to use to ensure dynamic and intelligent policy statements down the road. See you next time.